Hi, I'm Danica Fine. Welcome back to the Schema Registry course. In this Schema Registry module, we'll explore the basic workflow you'll take when working with schemas. This involves writing schema files and generating the model objects that they represent. You'll also learn how to use plugins for Maven and Gradle that make it easier for you to work with schemas. Let's get started by writing a schema file in protobuf format. Here's a schema outlining a purchase type, along with all of the fields that we'd need to describe a purchase. The first line declares the version of protocol buffers to use. Throughout the course, we're going to use version 3. The package declaration creates a namespace for protofiles to prevent name clashes. By default, it'll be the package name of the generated Java class, unless you specify option Java package in the protofile. The option Java outer class name field describes the name of the generated Java file. Protocol buffers define the records as a message, and within that, we can specify the fields and their types. We'll go into more detail on how protobuf works in the next module. But in the meantime, Here's an AVR representation of that same purchase record. Notice that it's defined in JSON format. The namespace field serves the same purpose as in the protobuf file, preventing name collisions. The namespace also becomes the package name for the generated Java file. For Avro, fields are declared in a JSON array. Again, we define this purchase record using the same fields as in the protobuf file. For now, we're staying pretty high level, but in the next module, we'll take some time to go into more detail about Avro as well. Now that we've written some schema files, you might be wondering where we ought to put them to make use of them in our application. They need to live somewhere within the Java project. We're going to take the opinionated, but hopefully not controversial, stance that the Avro schema files go in the source main Avro directory, and that protobuf files land in source main proto. Once you've written your schema files, you'll want to generate the model data objects from the schema files. Fortunately, there are plugins available that you can integrate into your local build with either Maven or Gradle. In this course, we're going to work with Gradle. In the upcoming exercise, you'll configure a build.gradle file to use Avro and Protobuf. Before we move on, though, we should note that Schema Registry supports JSON schema as well. But that's more of a specification, while Avro and Protobuf are full serialization platforms. As a result, the tooling is much better for these two versus JSON schema. Let's now do a quick walkthrough of a Gradle configuration file. The plugins section is where you identify the plugins that will be used when running Gradle scripts. This example includes plugins required for working with schema registry. For the protobuf plugin, we use generated files base dir to point to the directory where the generated files should land. The upcoming exercise will use the Avro plugin defaults, so the build.gradle file doesn't contain configuration settings for it. All right, now let's put together the Gradle configuration block to connect to schema registry. You set the URL field to the value from the schema registry URL property. Next, we have the credentials block. Here, you'll set the credentials necessary to communicate with schema registry in Confluent Cloud. You'll split the basic auth user info field into two parts. All of the letters and numbers up to the colon will form the username. Everything after the colon will form the password field. Next up is the register block. It contains all of the information that the plugin uses to register a schema. To generate the objects from schema files, all you do is run the clean build command. And here are the files that are generated as a result of that build command. Note that the files shown here don't necessarily reflect what you'll see when you go through the exercise. But that's it. Now you're ready to configure and build your own schema files in the next hands-on. See you there.